Hello and happy Tuesday, everyone. I want to start by giving a shout out to all the teachers out there, uplifting, informing, inspiring us. Students, dap up your teacher. Give a handshake or high five. Let them know you appreciate them. I'm Koi Wire. This is CNN 10. And we're going to start today with news out of Japan. The island country in East Asia, located in the Pacific Ocean, is worried about a once in a century mega quake. But does it need to be? On August 8th, parts of the Western Japan area felt the ground shake from a 7.1 magnitude earthquake, prompting both local and national government agencies to react. Meteorologists quickly issued a first of its kind nationwide warning that a major earthquake could hit within the next week. The concern was that the smaller quake could trigger a much larger one from Japan's Nankai trough, which is considered the nation's most dangerous fault. The alert caused officials to close beaches, cancel events, slow down trains, and even stockpile supplies. In the end, most advisories were lifted, and thankfully, there was no major damage from the 7.1 magnitude quake. Still, the country remains on high alert, prepping for any potential emergencies. One week after the advisory, Japan lifted the warning about a potential mega quake. The event has experts questioning whether an alert system like this is accurate or even necessary, and it has some scientists wondering when they should step in if they see clues that an earthquake may be on the horizon. As one seismologist in the U.S. put it, you don't want a mass evacuation panic that's not warranted, but you want people not to go on their merry ways. Japan is no stranger to strong earthquakes. It's located in the Ring of Fire, an area known for intense seismic and volcanic activity around the Pacific Ocean. The most devastating quake in recent Japanese history was the 9.1 magnitude Tohoku earthquake in 2011, which caused a tsunami and killed some 20,000 people. CNN's Hanako Montgomery has more. Why is Japan concerned about a mega quake? Japan is an earthquake prone country and it's been dreading the big one for years. But in early August, it issued its first ever mega quake advisory, meaning there's now an increased risk of it happening. The big one, also known as the Nankai Trough earthquake, would hit somewhere along the southern coast and could be massive, measuring eight or higher in magnitude. It could trigger huge tsunamis like what we saw during the March 11th disaster, causing trillions in damage and potentially killing hundreds of thousands. Japan advised people to stay prepared, but it didn't suggest any evacuations and downplayed any immediate danger. Still, the prime minister canceled his trip abroad, people are stockpiling food, and some are canceling their summer plans. It sounds alarming, but how worried should we really be? Government experts estimate that within the next 30 years, there's a 70 to 80% chance of this mega quake happening. And even with the risk increase right now, the chances of it happening are still under 1%. This 30-year estimate is also based on just one theory that uses past quake data and records of seabed changes in southern Japan. We don't yet have the science to predict when, where, or how big an earthquake will be. But those in Japan remain prepared because an earthquake can happen anytime, anywhere. Pop quiz hot shot. Which one of these nations is often referred to as a hermit kingdom? Switzerland, Germany, South Korea, or North Korea? With known secrecy and willful isolation from the rest of the world, North Korea is the answer here. Now imagine how interesting it would be if you got a rare window into that secretive hermit kingdom of around 25 million people that sits across the northern border of South Korea. That's what happened when one man in Canada used his hobby of surfing satellite channels to stumble on the North Korean state television and then shared what he is seeing on YouTube. Using his backyard satellite dish, Peter Fairley was just scanning for sports channels. There we go. We have a signal. But the Canadian engineer from outside Toronto stumbled upon something he never expected. And that's when I saw the color bars, uh, the test card, and the, uh, the Pyongyang written on it. That triggered my uh, curiosity. Like, was this really coming from North Korea? Sure enough, it was a live satellite feed of North Korean state television. From daily dancer size to cooking programs to patriotic propaganda. 
it's very kind of 1980s too. It's very MTV, their videos. Broadcasting mass games, military parades, and yes, missile launches to some 26 million people who call Kim Jong-un's secret state home. The videos all of, of Kim, uh, how great he is, and, and everybody, you know, crying and loving him. Peter began recording. Do you feel like these programs do have power to influence people's minds? Absolutely. After watching uh, one, one full day of, of the North Korean content, for two nights in a row, I just had a lot of very bizarre dreams as if I was there. Posting an edited version on his YouTube channel. Did you think this was going to go viral? No, absolutely not. Go viral? He did. Peter's videos racking up almost 2 million views in less than two months. People were basically giving comments that were all over the spectrum from they loved it to they were terrified by it. Peter's pirated Pyongyang propaganda, a window into what the North Korean state wants its people to see and believe. Continuing with our CNN 10 Olympian series this week, I caught up with Team USA swimmer Katie Ledecky, whose work ethic, Zoom-like focus, and discipline are the stuff books could be written about. With nine Olympic golds now, 14 medals in all, she's the most dominant female swimmer we've ever seen. Let's go inside the mind of Katie Ledecky, the most decorated female American Olympian of all time. What are some of the things that maybe you take for granted that you do or have done over the years that other people might find fascinating? Uh, I think I, I just try really hard to be consistent each year. Uh, you know, it's not just every four years for me. I'm competing at world championships in between Olympics and a lot of other meets as well. So it's not just a few races every four years. It's a lot of, a lot of training, a lot of races in between these big moments. What's one of the sacrifices your family made that was either quirky or just something you're going to look back and say, wow, they really loved me? Well, definitely a lot of early mornings. I think any swim parent or swimmer would, would say that. Um, we have early morning practices. When I was you know, in middle school, high school, some of those practices would start at 4.45 in the morning. So my parents would be up at four, make me a quick breakfast, um, drive me to the pool, You know, definitely sacrifice some hours of sleep. And uh, just were great sports about it all. It was never a sacrifice to them. They were just supporting me and, and supporting my goals. You must be so proud. Now, Simone Biles told me she would be a honey badger in the gym, a sloth at home though. <laughs> what would your spirit animal be to describe the aura of Katie Ledecky? Uh, I think I would have to say a porpoise because oh, well, my, uh, my okay. summer league swim team, we were the Palisades porpoises. So that's yes. my go-to answer. And obviously I love the water, so. <laughs> that's pretty good. Picture me this, the year is 2052. You've just finished your last Olympics. Oh, come on. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Coach Ledecky, would you like that? I feel like you'd be good at that. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, I, I love swimming and I think no matter what I do beyond my swimming career, I think I'll always stay in the sport in some capacity. Today's story getting a 10 out of 10 is making some waves. Literally, on the coast of Rhode Island, Anita and Dwayne Ratchford are driving a Rolls Royce shaped boat on the water. They've been together for more than 20 years. He's a car enthusiast, she's an ocean lover, and schooner than later, they decided to bring their passions together. How about that? They said sometimes they get some stern looks, but mostly just smiles and waves. I've never seen any rudder one like it. <laughs> that reminds me of one of my favorite tongue twisters. Say toy boat as fast as you can five times without messing up. Toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat, toy boat. <laughs> All right, remember tomorrow is hashtag your word Wednesday. So follow me at Koi Wire on Instagram. Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. Put your unique vocabulary word and definition in the comment section of my most recent post, and we'll choose a winner to work into tomorrow's show, along with a shout out for you and your school. So put that in there too. Our shout out today goes to Dwight D. Eisenhower Middle School in Goddard, Kansas. Rise up. Let's do it again tomorrow, y'all. I'm Coy Wire, and we are CNN 10.